we have been seeing a lot of progress over the last uh, 30 years in decreasing credit card and payments fraud. Jan, what do you think will happen in the future? Well, there is very interesting regulation coming up in the next few years. In short, every bank will be, uh, have to offer the possibility for a third party to make a payment in your name to someone else. Now, what that means is a little bit comparable like an electronic check or a token that can be instantly transferred to someone else. Uh, the consequence will be that you can walk into a shop, provide a, a code or, a, an, or approval, literally, and then money will be paid directly from your account, the shop's account, securely and instantly. Now, this will diametrically change the dynamics of the payment market, and a lot of the current market players will find that their situation will change significantly. But from a generic perspective, it's very good. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to this change, and I think that very interesting solutions will come up in the following the, these changes. Gregor, what do you think about the future? Are you as optimistic as Jan? I think we, we have been seeing a lot of progress over the last uh, 30 years in decreasing credit card and payments fraud. And uh, I think we'll continue to slowly but steadily improve. Yeah, I agree with you, Gregor. I, I think that as the systems become more mature, we're also seeing on a pan-European basis, locally here in the UK, the regulators are working to improve the payment system. Uh, the payment services regulator here in the UK are currently looking into how they can standardize, modernize and make, generally make the payment systems more available and better and uh, more up to scratch and to be usable by more different companies to push forward innovation and change in this space. Uh, so this initiative, it is on uh, EU, European Union level or is it on a global level? Yeah, the European Union is, has a, a payment service directive too that's coming out that will definitely democratize who can work with payments and how that can happen. It will modernize the whole infrastructure. Uh, following that, the, the payment services regulator here in the UK are taking steps and measures on their own. And I believe that you see similar things in, in India are going on. We, we can see them in the Middle East. Uh, and generally, globally, I think that there is a movement towards better and more open payment systems. And the fraud, will it be less or more in the future? What's your opinion here? Well, there I'm a bit of a cynic. I'm fairly certain that whatever improvements we do, the crooks will do their improvements, and we will see if it's not the same kind of fraud, there will be new ways of stealing. And people have in all times always found ways of acquiring someone else's money. I think what we have seen, uh, for instance, with, with the New York City zero tolerance and so on, is that uh, often it's the... the possibility to be a criminal that make people a criminal and and when we have better security I think the the uh, fraud level in society will go down a little bit but there is a fundamental problem with on one hand you can't really be doing fraud if it's possible to detect and punish you if you're always caught but on the other hand people have some expectation of privacy of not every purchase they being made being tracked by by the authorities now that's a good point there is, there is another debate going on in society about cryptocurrencies of different kinds and, and distributed and general ledgers that will keep track. And if we take the example of Bitcoin, because it's the most famous cryptocurrency, I believe, around, it was created to be anonymous uh, and so that you can do transactions for a purpose where you don't want to be seen or known. But the interesting piece with a system like Bitcoin is that as soon as you know the identity of one of the parts, then you can track every single transaction that they do. I'm not saying that we will use Bitcoin-style cryptocurrencies in society everywhere, but it wouldn't surprise me if more and more of the economy will be transferred into that sector because it definitely makes any type of black or illegal market sector 
very difficult if the general currencies are followed on a transactional basis. Yeah, you're, you're quite right. If a person who sets up a number of, of Bitcoin servers can quite easily track a lot of transactions, also because of the transaction sharding, which means that transa one transaction is seen in many different places. I mean, that's the whole point of, a, of having a shared ledger is that everyone can see what's going on. Uh, that's the design of it. Mm. And that means from a tax perspective, the taxman would be wonderfully happy if he could see every transaction going on and determine whether correct VAT has been charged or not. So I guess it's a question for the authorities to start doing tracking. This comes down to a privacy issue now. So I, I believe that we will see a balance of, of the requirements for privacy and to uh, be able to do small transactions outside the control of, of the authorities. But give it 20 to 30 years, then you never know where it will end up. And, and I think that the temptation to track every transaction is going to be massive. And I don't think that, uh, that most people realize what they have uh, uh, committed to when they start using this currency. I think that the most users have quite the opposite view of it. Well, that's possible. But already today, uh, we know that, that both uh, tax authorities and other people have, uh, and the, the regulators have access to a large number of, of transactions that happen in the financial services system on a basically instant view of who is doing it, why we know that the financial systems where more large transactions happen, they are being reported centrally almost everywhere already today. So to some extent, it's already happening, if, even though it's not down to the point where every chewing gum bought can be uh, tracked and traced. Thank you very much. Uh... Jan for being with us from London and we have to be excuse our listeners for the bad phone line. Thank you, Kasmi, and thank you, Gregor. It was good talking to you. I very much enjoyed this. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gregor. Thank you and see you next week on Architecture Corner. So this was an episode about innovation in payments, uh, finance and fintech industry. If you're interested in more of our episodes on innovation, digital talent and security, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.